Hi, my name is Kelly Janes. I'm with Mercy Behavioral Health. I am a licensed marriage and family therapist and a substance abuse counselor. So today we're gonna to talk about loving in the pandemic. So how couples can get through this pandemic um, that's lasted longer than we had hoped. So loving in the pandemic is challenging. Um, it's challenging for the healthiest of couples. So today we're gonna to talk about some tips and tricks we can just add into your week um, into kind of like practicing this to become your routine for you and your partner, okay? So these tips and tricks, they're called small things often uh, by the Gottman Method. So the first one that we're gonna talk about uh, is the six second kiss. So a lot of people think about this and they're like, oh, oh boy. So the six second kiss is really just trying to get you to think about every time that you greet your partner, but also when you leave them, you're having a meaningful experience. So giving each other a kiss, talking a little bit about your day, um, your upcoming day, how your day was, and then parting on a good note, okay? I always like to say the funny saying, this is how people remember the six second kiss is, are you kissing your partner like they're your partner? Or are you kissing them like you would say bye to your grandmother, right? You want it to be like they're your partner. You want to have that meaningful moment. So we call it the six second kiss, and that's the first one. Um, the next one is called affection and admiration. So this is really doing small things often, those unexpected things, okay? Um, you wanna make sure that your partner is feeling like you're thinking about them throughout the day. This can be done multiple different ways. Um, sending them a nice text, telling them that you're missing them, um, my favorite is leaving little love notes for one another, so in the lunchbox, on the mirror, in their laptop, um, something cute that they're gonna find. Um, and then another one is just really expressing that appreciation that you have for them. So if you think about it, we usually get appreciation from our significant others when it's a big thing, right? Um, your car breaks down, somebody picks you up, you, you get that appreciation, right? But the small things are actually the things that matter. So when your partner is the one that took out that really stinky garbage, making sure to say and recognize, hey, thanks for taking that out. And we're talking about trying to do this at least once a day. There are so many things that we get caught up into our routines that we forget about talking about those small things, okay? Um, and then the last piece of this is making sure to compliment one another, okay? There's the compliments of, oh, you look nice, things like that, okay? Th that's nice, that's good to hear, but we want you to be complimenting one another about their character, their personality. So a good example would be, um, you know, honey, I love how caring you are. I really noticed that last night when you were helping our elderly neighbor, you know, move the snow off of their driveway. So giving them an example. Um, and that's really making sure each other is feeling heard and that you're being recognized from one another. So the next one is affection. So this is making sure that every day you guys have at least a few minutes of physical touch outside of intimacy, okay? Um, so making sure that you guys are holding each other's hands, sitting next to each other on the couch when you're watching TV, not on separate couches, okay? Um, just making sure you're at least having a few minutes a day. Positive communication. So posi positive communication is so essential. Um, we wanna be making sure that we are showing our partners that they're supported, they're validated, and the most important part is that they're feeling heard. So sometimes when we have these conversations, we, we kind of get stuck into trying to fix the problem right away, right? Your partner comes home and they had a rough day at work. We want to take it back for a second and really listen and ask what they need before jumping into solving the problem for them. That's usually not what they need. They want to feel heard. Um, so that, you know, assertiveness, positive communication, that's, that's really big in couples work. Um, and then my favorite one is making sure you are still dating one another. So this means at least once a week going on a date, okay? Now we are in a lovely pandemic, so it makes things a little complicated, but it's still possible. Um, all of my couples that I work with still are doing great at this. Um, so some COVID-friendly date ideas, playing cards, playing a board game, going for a walk. Um, there's been lots of bonfires I've heard of my couples doing. Um, making sure just to have time with one another, cooking together, baking together, um, and then just make sure when you're doing the dates that there are no cell phones. I always say TV and movies, are they don't count as dates because you're not interacting enough. 
And then when you are on these dates, you want to be talking about positive things. You want to be talking about each other's hopes and dreams and, and desires and expectations and really make sure that you're in tune with one another's worlds. Okay, so this is once a week trying to have at least some sort of time just you two. Some other tips to keep in mind is making sure they're expressing to one another what you need from one another. With the pandemic right now, focus on your physical and mental health is essential. So if you need help getting an hour every other day to be able to do your yoga class or you know go for a walk or do whatever really fills your cup, making sure you're expressing that because that is important. The healthier you are, the healthier your relationship is gonna be. Um, it's, it's also keep, important to keep in mind, and I say this all the time, is we are not mind readers. I wish we were, but we are not, right? So expressing your needs to your partner is that much more important because they don't know most of the time what you need. So you can be sitting there frustrated, feeling like you, you, know, you want them to do something, you want them to say something, and they're kind of sitting there oblivious, but you know, not in the wrong, because they just don't know. So if you need something, say something. Um, and then lastly, keep in mind that we all argue. Every single relationship argue. We are human beings. But there is a way to have a healthy communication with hard topics, okay? You wanna focus on making sure the conversation is helpful and productive versus harmful and hurtful, okay? Some simple tips are using assertive communication, making sure you're sitting down when you're having a conversation, and making sure nobody is in the fight or flight mode. Okay, if you are feeling overwhelmed or if you're in that fight or flight mode, making sure to take a minute, both of you recognize it, and calm yourselves down with a coping skill, mindfulness, grounding techniques. Um, so that's what I have for you today on couples work and surviving the pandemic, making sure the love lasts. If you are wanting more information or help, please do contact the EAP department. Um, we are here to help. You guys are not alone in this.